you. Welcome back to the channel. You have found your way to how to drum and bass, where it is my mission to go deeper and more in depth than any other drum and bass tutorials that you can find online so you can improve your drum and bass production. And before we continue, can I just say that I'm proud of you? Cause look at you, you're spending your free time watching videos about how to learn more about music production. And that's exactly what you need right now. Way to go, man. Sell five. Okay. Um, today I want to talk about kicks. Actually, I wanna talk about kicks and snares. That's why this is gonna be the first in a two-part series going super in-depth on drums. Now, you might ask yourself, okay, why does the world need another video about creating kicks? And originally, I thought the same thing. But then I started looking around and I found that a lot of the information that's available is either spread out all over the place, so tips about which frequencies to use or how to use your devices or how to structure your kick or what layers to use or all these tiny little things that you could do are out there, but in all these individual videos by all these different creators, I did not find any one really cohesive and comprehensive template process about the creation of a kick. And then the second thing that I, I struggled to find was very specific information about drum and bass kicks and how they fit in the mix and how kicks are treated differently in drum and bass. And then lastly, I couldn't really find any information that was already out there about how to have a lot of control over basically everything. And the same goes for snares. So what we're gonna do today in this video is not only try and cover that gap in knowledge, but also to talk about a process from start to finish of creating a kick that involves understanding what the hell a kick even is, why it sounds that way, and we're gonna look at the individual sound sources from an actual physical kick drum, and then take that into the creation process of the kick so that you're not just blindly following steps that you learned by heart, but you understand why things are happening in a certain way. And to do that, we're going to go into Ableton and we're going to create a chain that gives you full control over every single aspect of the sound. After we're done today, you can shape your kick to be any way you want and you can change it to fit any mix or any song or any vibe. And I think that that is pretty awesome. In this video, you will find some consolidated Ableton devices with some macro knobs that I've made, which if you wanna use them, they are available for a free download in the link below. All right, make sure to put on your headphones so we can hear properly what's going on. And without further ado, let's dive into Serum. All right, so we are in an Ableton project here where I've already built what we're going to build today. And first, we're gonna talk a little bit about our approach today and what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna start all over and we're gonna build it from scratch so that we get the same end result. So yeah, this is a kick drum, right? And um, let's just dissect what is actually happening when you kick a kick drum. So you can see here that, you know, this thing has a couple of components. First of all, of course, there's this, uh, I, I guess it's cow hide. I don't know if it's still that today, but the hide or the sail that is going to vibrate when you hit it. Then also there's these little metal parts. I mean, obviously there's this ring, but then of course there's the frame and there's these little metal, you know, feet that it's standing on. So that also, of course, when there's going to be vibrations throughout this film here, of course, that's also going to vibrate. So that's already two things that are making noise. And then also, of course, you can see there's, there's a foot pedal here, right? There's a little foot pedal that, you know, a foot is going to be on top of. And there's this little hammer that's going to make the noise. So what we can see already is that there's multiple sources of sound that are going to make up the entirety of the kick drum sound. So there's the hammer that makes a certain sound reverberating off of the hide. There's the hide itself that's going to vibrate. That's going to cause the low frequencies. And then there's the metal on the thing. And just generally speaking, the frame and the legs of the kick drum that is also going to make some sound that is a little bit more sort of noisy. And then, of course, there's a lot of variations in how all those different sounds can sound. Uh, because there's, as you can see here, if I just Google kick drums, there's already lots and lots of different types of kick drums and there's gonna be different shapes, there's gonna be different sizes, there's gonna be different materials that it's made with and each of those can sound a million different ways essentially. And so what we wanna do to be able to build the perfect kick drum and to be able to change the kick drum to whatever we want it to be is we just wanna build stuff in Ableton that makes it possible for us to emulate as much as possible and to have as much control over the timbre of the sound as possible in relationship to what would actually happen when you change materials or change whatever or change blah blah blah. And the goal is just to get as much control as possible and also to understand 
which sounds make up which part of the kick drum so you can change it to whatever you like to fit your track. All right, so you can see that I've done that here. What we're gonna make today is we're gonna make a group that consists of three things. Uh, and then one is the actual kick itself, which also actually consists of po four possible parts. We're gonna talk about that very in depth. We're gonna create some low rumbly kind of noise that will make it sound better on speakers that don't have lots of bass in them, such as a car speaker, for example. And then we're going to do some parallel processing. And so together, that kick is gonna sound like this. I would say that that's a pretty standard quality kick, but even if you don't quite like the sound of that, it doesn't really matter because after we're done today, after we're done with this process and you've got everything in place, you can change everything about this sound that you want. Because as you can see, just even just by going to the kick, we have lots and lots of processing that gives us a whole ton of control over everything that we want to add to this kick drum. We've got multiple layers, we've got multiple EQs, we've got a lot of macro knobs to play with, and that's just going to give us extreme control over, over everything. All right, so let's just start from scratch. And we're going to start by building essentially just the base of the kick. I've made this kick group here with the three layers that we were just talking about, and we're, we're just going to start by adding an instance of Siri. So we're gonna add these MIDI notes here. Uh, we're gonna just put this on a loop. So now it's just right. All right, so let's start with the vibrating cowhide or whatever. That's gonna give a low rumble. And that rumble is going to change very quickly in pitch because first it will start vibrating really quickly because it gets hit by the foot pedal really hard and it's gonna, it's gonna slow down and that's gonna give lower frequencies. So what we want to do for that is we want to grab the basic shapes here and just get a sine wave, put it two octaves down so that we get this. That will be sort of the base tone of our kick. And then what we want to do, we want to control the level of this oscillator. And you could use the envelopes for this, but I find that using LFOs just gives you a, a bit more control. So let's assign LFO one level all the way down and all the way up here. And then we're going to make a shape sort of like this. So we're going to have a little bit of sustain here, here, and then make this go down for now. Let's keep it at a quarter note, but let's put it on envelope mode. That at least has the, the length of a kick now. And this is nice because we can also just change this later to change how long this kick sustains, right? So let's keep it like this for now, but we can change it later. And then the second thing that we want, right, is because this cowhide starts vibrating really fast first and then slows down, we want the frequency to pick up really high, but go down really, really quickly back to this, what you're hearing here, this very low frequency. So let's do that by getting another LFO that is shaped similarly, but maybe just a little bit shorter because we want to have individual control over this. And we're going to apply that to the coarse pitch here uh, and also put it at envelope mode. First of all, we want to go to the matrix here and make it unipolar instead of bipolar, right? We don't want it to go both ways. We want to put this level probably at like 24, that means it'll start 24 semitones up from the root note that we're playing. And that will give you this. Maybe we make this a little bit shorter. There we go. That already sounds a lot more like a kick. And then we want to work on what we call the transient. So the first part that the click as, it, as it's also called. And we can do two things. First of all, we can assign another LFO that moves really, really, really quickly. So something like this. And we want to assign that to the level of the noise. We're going to turn the noise oscillator on and then we're going to take this noise and have it be controlled by that. And also put it on envelope mode, of course. So what this is going to do is it's going to basically emulate a little bit of the noise that comes from this vibrating frame. Just the initial super fast attack of the kick drum, what we call it. Just gives a little bit more uh, power to the sound. And then to further control the timbre or sort of the pitch uh, that this kick is playing at, we could add another really quick LFO, something like this and we could add it again to the course pitch so that actually we stack those two things on top of each other. So go back to the matrix, make it unipolar. This one we, we would put pretty low, like let's say, let's say around four. And this will allow you to change sort of the nature of the kick too. And then one thing that you probably want to do is you want to take a filter and you want to high pass this, uh, this noise actually so that it doesn't cause any issues in the low end. Maybe put it around like 1K. And then the next thing that we can do, right, is add some distortion to make it sound more real. So let's get some tube distortion, turn it up. 
And there we already have a, a pretty good basic kick, I would say. Maybe we can make it a little bit louder. We can, we can click this mix knob here and just turn up the level of the distortion. So there we've already got quite a nice little tiny shy kick. And this is, I think, where, you know, a lot of people would probably kind of stop and start doing uh, their, their post-processing. But we're going to take this a level further. So what we've done now is we've included the noise transient here in this serum patch. I'm going to take it out. So I'm just going to disactivate this filter and I'm just quickly going to bypass this noise level and turn the noise oscillator off so that we just keep the base of the kick. Quite nice. Because what I want to do is I want to create, out of this instrument rack, I want to group it so you can use Command G or Control G on Windows, I guess. And then let's get multiple channels going here. So here we have one serum that's playing the bass. We're going to rename this the bass. And then we're going to add another serum. And I want to add the same thing that we just did, but then just in another serum. So we're going to apply the noise oscillator here, use a high pass filter. I want to take this LFO and modulate the level of the noise like this again and shape the LFO like this uh, and put it on envelope mode, of course, and deactivate oscillator A so that we just have this noise here. Solo it, it sounds like this. The reason I want to do this is just so that if we want to put a different post-processing chain, we can do that here. We can play just with this noise click here if we wanted to. And we're going to call this the click. And that means that we have individual control over the click now. So for example, even the level of the click or how long it persists. So now it's very short, but we can make this longer, of course. And we could even make it a little bit louder. So that together it sounds like this. Maybe maybe we turn this down a little bit. Okay, so then that's just the initial transient. But what you can also hear is that after this cowhide vibrates, that whole frame vibrates a little bit more. In a lot of kicks you hear it is sort of just sort of like noise, sort of short noise till on it. So we're gonna do another instance of serum here so that we control that individually as well. We're gonna deactivate oscillator A, activate the noise, get an LFO again to put on the level of this noise, turn on envelope mode, and then let's change this uh, this noise sound maybe to the bright white because that's uh, some really random nice noise. So that's a really rough tail that we've got there, but we wanna you know we wanna shape that. So let's bring this up a little bit and let's make a part sustain here, sort of like this, and then just make it kind of like uh, like the Tafelberg in South Africa. <laughs> Yeah, let's make the shape like this and then maybe put it at like a 32. And then yeah, we could we could turn the level down a little bit. Okay, so we got a we got a rough thing going there. And we're going to call this the noise. And so we've really nicely split up the sound into three main elements. We've got the bass. We've got the click. And we've got the noise. Together, it sounds like. And so one final thing that we could do, which I think in this case, I tried it and it doesn't make it necessarily sound better, but to give you more creative option even still, you can go ahead and we can add a simpler here as, as a fourth channel, which we're going to call acoustic. We're also gonna put an EQ8 on top of this, just within this, this instrument rack here. And we're just gonna do a high pass to you know, wherever we really want. And what we can do then is we can go to Splice or any other uh, sample library that, that you've got, and we can pick a kick of which we like the timbre, um, and we can add it to this simpler here. So I've just picked this, uh, this, this, this sample here, which by itself without this low pass, it sounds like this. And then we can go ahead and low pass that just to keep that top end, and we could add that top end to our kick. So. In this case, we've already got a lot going on, so I don't think it adds that much, but if you were to take more acoustic kicks that have more room feel, or that might have more top end to it of a specific type of timbre, this could really also add something to your track. Okay, so we're definitely gonna have to clean that up and add a bunch of post-processing to make that sound really good. But so I just want to pinpoint that one of the main reasons that you do this is because 
we can add processing specifically to this instance of serum or this instance of serum or this instance of serum within this instrument rack, right? By adding it here. And then we can add anything that we want to affect the whole sound. So all of these things combined, we can add that behind here. So I think for now, necessarily, we don't yet need to add anything specifically to either of these channels. So let's dive into some group processing here. So let's go in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load in a wave shaper. This is a way to give distortion to the sound. And uh, one that's free and that's very cool is the M Wave Shaper from Melda Production. We're gonna put it here. And essentially what this does is it changes the sound wave uh, depending on the curve that you make. With nothing on it is this. And then we add it. We're gonna move this up. So it's just gonna add some distortion to, to all of the sound. This versus Okay, let's add the dry wet to almost maximum. So then what we want to do is we want this sound to sound more real. So if we go back to this kick drum, right? This kick drum is never uh, alone. It's always in a studio. And that studio is going to give it a sort of roominess. The sound is going to go past everything that's in the studio. So what we want to do is we want to add what is called an impulse response. And we can do that by adding convolution reverb. That's not regular reverb, but that's reverb that sounds like it's been passed through a very specific object, set of objects, or room. And so Ableton, actually, if you have the, the Live Plus version or whatever it's called, they have their own one, but you can download all kinds of convolution reverbs for free. So let's grab this convolution reverb, and we're going to add it here actually on the group, because we want the reverb to be on everything in a minute. And I'm just adding it now so that whatever we're doing to the rest of the sound is going to sound a lot better in that sort of final context. And we're gonna put it at a dry wet of like about 15%. But what's really cool is you go to this type here and you can select these categories of places for this impulse response. So for the way that it changes the sound. And there's actually this one that is made for drums. So that's perfect. We can go through a bunch of them. There's many, many, many. There's a snare chamber, uh, there's air percussion, whatever that means. There's all these different timbres that are specifically meant to make your kick or your snare or whatever sound more like it was done in an actual studio with an actual drum kit. I picked the made for drums and then the BM7 percussion air because I thought that sounded really nice. And that's just gonna give that tiny bit of extra oomph to the sound. If you turn it all the way up. And what we also want to do is we want to we want to get rid of the low end here with this EQ. So we wanted to drag this one down to like, let's say, I don't know, like 200 hertz or something. And maybe take out some of the highs here as well. Just so it sounds, it sounds more full, but it doesn't clash with all the other frequencies. So then what we want to do is there's a number of sort of key frequencies in a kick that determine the timbre, the feel. So what I've done actually recently is I've consolidated uh, what I find to be the most fundamental frequencies that change the sound into one big Ableton device, which I've lovingly called Frequency Control Kick. And as you can see, it's quite a, quite a large interface, and it has two EQs here, one that takes care of the lows and the highs, and one that takes care of any accentuations in the sound that we want, so extra frequencies, uh, extra volume on some frequencies. And But rather than sort of having to play around with this EQ, you know, by dragging the things and having to figure it out like that, I made some macro knobs that I labeled with what the, that frequency is going to add to the sound. So we've got the boom, we've got the thump, and then you know we've got here a, a low cut and a high shelf, because th that, that's basically everything for now that we want to control here. So let's say that we turn both of them off, the boom and the thump, and then let's, let's, just, let's just solo this, uh, this kick here, right? <laughs> And we can add some more boom, so boom, to the sound by accentuating anywhere between like 70, 80, 90, maybe even 100 hertz, depending on where, where sort of your kick frequency is. It just gives it more boom. So this versus very exaggerated. So we can add some, some more boom, some more body to the kick, some more power. And then so there's another essential frequency, which I've called the thump, which adds, well, sort of the thump, so the thumpiness of the kick, which is sometimes what samples from like Splice are described as well, like thumpy kick 101 or something. If I turn it on to the frequency around sort of like the 250 hertz area, again, you can, you can range this between like, I don't know, 300 and 200 or something. It sounds like this. Mm. 
with that and with. It's subtle, but on big speakers, this will, this will become a lot more noticeable and it just gives more body to the sound. So these knobs are a way to very easily control how much of that you want. You can control the width of the sound as well. So you can see here that that's essentially the Q and you can basically have full control over these two essential frequencies like that. And then, so of course, we also have the low cut. In this case, you know, we just want to low cut everything by 30 hertz so that we don't get those super low muddy frequencies that are going to mess things up. And I've got a high shelf because sometimes, you know, we want to accentuate that click. Um, now we've built a click in, but maybe you're working with a sample, you know, that, that doesn't have that much high end. So we can introduce a high shelf and we can also just control that. And so the great thing about all of these racks is I'm gonna give them to you for free here in a really nice consolidated manner so that you can just use them plug and play in your own productions. The only thing that I would say is it's better to go and build this along with this tutorial yourself so that you get more of an understanding of what's going on. Hey, so really quickly, if you are enjoying this tutorial, then I might have something that you are interested in. Very soon, not too long from now, I'm going to be releasing a course that is completely follow along from start to finish from ideation all the way to creation, all the way to mixing and mastering a professional drum and bass track. So if you like following along with me in these videos and really going in depth and you want more of that, then what you can do right now is you can go to the link in the description and you can register your interest for when this course comes out. If that sounds like something that you might be interested in, then you can go to the link in the description and tell me that you're interested. Leave your email and what I'll do is I'll give you a 50 percent discount as soon as it comes out. All right, end of transmission. Let's go back to the video. And so we've built a nice bass, but now I've realized I don't really like the sound of the noise tail and I kind of want the kick to be like to have a little bit more body so that these extra frequencies here in the low slash mid end can get accentuated more with this beautiful EQ that we've got here. So I'm gonna go back into Serum and here you can already, you can see the power of being able to process everything sort of individually. So what we see now is that here, this is quite short, right? But we can just make this longer or play with it. <laughs> that sounds better to me. Okay, and then I wanna go clean up that noise tail. So I just go here to the noise, open that serum. And I think, you know, let's make this sort of like a little bit shorter, make it hit a little bit earlier. And turn the pitch up. Yeah, this is sounding better to me. This is sounding, this is sounding a lot better. And then maybe let's just actually add a little bit of that high shelf. Okay, I think that's good for now. Then the next thing I wanna do is I wanna add a little bit more processing to this group. I'm gonna do it now because I want you to hear how it affects the bass of the kick sound, but it's also gonna affect these two other things that we're going to build. So now it's just got this convolution reverb, but I wanna go ahead and add a glue compressor to that so that it's going to glue all the sounds that we're gonna make all these layers together. And I'm gonna take the threshold down to like, let's say like 23 dB and the makeup 13 and put soft clip on. And let's group this together and let's name it so that we understand our intent here. Let's just call it final control. These are to add the, the finishing touches once we have all these layers that we're going to build. And I like grouping things and naming them because you can add so many devices that you can kind of sort of forget what, what your intention was and what you're trying to do here. Um, and this is just a really great way to sort of keep oversight and, and remind yourself like, oh yeah, that's, that's what's going on here. And then also I wanna add some saturation that's gonna go over the entire group here. So we're gonna just do that really modest from now. We're gonna add say three dB, uh, but I do wanna change it to a soft sign so that it's a bit more aggressive. I still feel like that noise tail is probably a bit loud. So let's decrease the volume of that. Yeah, maybe that's better. And then finally, what I wanna to add to the group is another EQ device that I build that has two simple functions. One of them is to, to accentuate once more, finally, uh, one range of frequencies, which uh, is kind of the same around the, the boom area that's just gonna give that kick more rumble or, or body or whatever you wanna call it. And the other one is this remove boxiness EQ. The boxy sounds if you don't know what boxy means it just makes the kick sound a little bit more like someone's knocking on a door rather than someone's using a kick drum it's usually somewhere between like 200 and 300 hertz you can you can kind of play around with this eq and sort of find where it is but i found that with the kick that we're creating today uh, around 260 hertz you, you just want to scoop out like six dbs and it uh, it matters considerably 
let's accentuate some more of these booms then and let's remove some of this boxiness. Without any of this on it, it sounds like. And by removing the boxiness, it sounds like this. That just sounds a lot cleaner. And then let's also add this extra accentuation just to give it even more of that boom because that's what I'm looking for today. I think that sounds nice. All right, then let's get to the pro level. Something that uh, a lot of people don't think about when they're just producing with their headphones on is that some speakers just don't have that great uh, a bass. And so we see here that when, we, when we're creating this kick, the kick has a few components, right? But a very large component is this bass here that is just very, very low frequencies, essentially. And so if you play this on a speaker, like your, your car speaker or uh, like a shitty little UA boom, UE boom speaker without that much bass, or you know what I'm talking about, then it's just gonna catch this click and this noise transient and your kick is gonna sound like ass, essentially. And so Dada Life, which is a really cool artist from like, I guess from back in the day, but they still make music, recently taught me this super cool trick which is um, what you can do is you can add an extra layer, right? So basically you're just gonna copy like your whole serum patch or you could even kick this out to audio and use the, the entire sample. In this case, let's just, you know, let's just grab this whole instrument rack here. Let's add it here. But what we're going to do is we're gonna get an EQ8 here and we're gonna low pass this so that we cut off everything sort of like above 100 hertz. Of course, we also have to add the MIDI notes here. And then what we're gonna use is we're gonna get a vocoder and we're gonna use noise as the carrier. And then we're gonna put at 100% dry wet because we want the entire signal to be affected. Uh, we can decrease the foreman just a little bit. Let's take this release down to like 50 milliseconds or something. And what's this, what is this gonna do? It's gonna, it's gonna generate low end noise, like thumpy noise. And this noise is much, much easier heard on those crappy speakers so that your kick doesn't fall away because of the missing of the sub on those speakers. So it sounds like this. And now it's it's not that loud anymore because we low cut it a lot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a utility here and we're gonna say like 12, 12 dB or something like that. And so by itself, it sounds kind of meh, right? But what it's gonna do is it's gonna add an extra layer to your kick that just allows it to be heard much, much better on crappy speakers. Uh, while on bigger speakers, it's just gonna give more frequency content to your kick to make it sound harder, even on great speakers. All right, and then the final thing that you could do is you could add some parallel processing so that we can compress the highs without compressing the lows. That's just gonna make the kick a little bit more energetic. So what we're just gonna do, uh, you could bounce this out to audio, that's probably better for your CPU, but for easy purposes, we're just gonna, we're gonna take everything that we got that we got over here. We're gonna paste it in this parallel processing MIDI channel, but then after everything, we're going to add an EQ8. We're gonna take out all those lows here and add some MIDI notes here too, so that we keep this part of the sound. Maybe we change it even more upwards. Let's see, we can always change that later. And then we're gonna add a compressor and we're basically you know, gonna try and compress the shit out of, <laughs> out of that high end. Press this makeup. I don't like that, so. So without that parallel processing, right, it sounds like this. But with the parallel processing, it's gonna sound like this. So just a lot more energy, a lot more boom to it. And of course you can change how much compression you want to have going on here. It's entirely up to you. You can change uh, how much of the frequencies you want to keep in there. Uh, that's just gonna, it's just another control to help you sculpt the sound. Whew, all right. So that was a lot of processing, but the general gist of it is that because we've broken down everything into very small individual components that we have basically full control over, what we can do is we can add we can copy all of this and maybe save it as an instrument rack and add it whenever we're using a project and it's not gonna sound right, right out of the box. But you will have all the tools and if you've built this with me together or if you've used this a few times, you'll understand how to use those tools. So the different EQs, the different macro knobs, the parallel processing, the noise, etc., to do whatever you want to your kick to make it sound exactly the way that you need it to in the mix. So you'll never feel that helplessness again that sometimes when you use a sample, you're like, man, shit, I, I just wish it sounded more like this. Well, now you can change everything. So yeah, 
that was the video. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something. Let me know in the comments what was the most useful thing or actually if you have any criticism i'd love to hear it as well if you have any other ideas please share them below because the people that are watching this want to know too and and so do i so yeah without further ado i think uh i think that that's it so yeah see you in the next video